This is Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. What think you, sailors? It was perchance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother. And so perchance may he be. True, madam. And to comfort you with chance, assure yourself. After our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother, most provident in peril, bind himself, courage and hope, both teaching him the practice to a strong mast that lived upon the sea, where, like a rhyme on the dolphin's back, I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves so long as I could see. For saying so, there's good. Mine own escape unfoldeth to my hope, whereto thy speech serves for authority, the like of him. Knowst thou this country? Aye, madam. For I was bred, born, not three hours, travelled from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke, in nature as in name. What is his name? Orsino. Orsino. I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so is now, or was so very late. For but a month ago I went from hence, and then was fresh in murmur. As you know, what great ones do, the less will prattle on. That he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What she? A virtuous man. The daughter of a count that died some twelve months since, then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died for whose dear love they say she hath abjured the company and sight of men. Oh, that I served that lady, and might not be delivered to the world till I had made mine own occasion mellow what my estate is. That were hard to compass, for she will admit no kind of suit. No, not the dupes. Music be the food of love. Play on. Give me excess of it. That surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. That strain again. It had a dying fall. Oh, it came all my ears like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough. No more. It is not so sweet now as it was before. Oh, spirit of love. How quick and fresh art thou, but notwithstanding thy capacity receiveth as the sea, naught enters there of what validity and pitch soe'er, but falls into abatement and low price, even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy, that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go hunt, my lord? What, Curia? The hunt? Why, so I do, the noblest that I have. Oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. How now? What news from her? So please, my lord, I would not be admitted. But from her handmaid to return this answer. The element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face at ample view. But like a cloistress, she will veil it walk, and water once a day her chamber round with eye-offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh. 
she that had a heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love but to a brother? How will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her? When liver, brain, and heart, these sovereign thrones are all supplied and filled, her sweet perfections with one self-king, away before me to sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers. I prithee, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am. And be my aid for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as an eunuch to him. It may be worth thy pains, for I can sing and speak to him in many sorts of music that will allow me very worth his service. What else may I have? To time I will commit. Only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be you this eunuch, and your mute I'll be. When my tongue blabs, let my eyes not see. <laughs> If the Duke do continue these favors towards you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He have known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. Cesario. Thou knowest no less but all. I have unclasped to thee the very book, even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto Olivia. Be not denied access. Stand at her doors and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as to spoke, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Say I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, then. Unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. It shall become thee well to act my woes. She will attend it better in thy youth than in the nuncios of more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. Yet that, believe it. For they shall yet belie thy happy years that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubious. A small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound, and all is semblative of a woman's part. I know thy constellation is right apt for this affair. Some four or five attend him. All, if you will, for I myself am best when least in company. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord, to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady, yet above all strive, whoe'er I woo, myself would be his wife. What a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus? I'm sure care is an enemy to life. Oh, by my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier o' nights. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exceptions to your allowance. Why little except? Before accepting? Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no further than I am. These clothes be good enough to drink in, so be these boots too. And if they're not, let them hang themselves in their own straps. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday. And of a foolish knight that you brought here one night to be her wooer. Who, oh, Sir Andrew Aguchi? Aye, he. He's as tall a man as any is in the Lydia. A <laughs> sap to the purpose. Why, well, he had 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, but he'll have but a year in all those ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. Why would you say so? He plays with the Viola de Gamboa, speaks three or four languages, word for word, without book, and with all the good gifts of nature. Oh, yes, indeed. Almost natural. For besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreller. And but that he hath the gift of a coward to allay the gust he hath in quarrelling, tis thought amongst the prudent he would quickly have the gift of a grave. By his hand the scoundrels and the subtractors that say so of him. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking health to my niece, I'll drink to her as long as there's a passage in my throat and drink in Olivia. <laughs> He's a coward of a coistal, and I'll not drink to my niece till his brains turn to the toe like a parish top. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Esiliano Falco, here comes Andrew A. Gilface. Sir Toby Belch. How now, Sir Toby Belch? Sweet, Sir Andrew. Uh, bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. What's that? My niece is chambermaid. Oh, good mistress Acost. I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress Mary Acost. <laughs> you mistake, my Acost is front her, board her, woo her, assail her. Oh, I'm a troll. I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? <laughs> Fare you well, gentlemen. And I'll let part so, Sir Andrew, which thou might never draw a sword again. Uh, and you part so, mistress, I would I might never draw a sword again. <laughs> Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Oh, sir, I have not you by the hand. Marry, but you shall have, and here's my hand. Oh, oh now, sir, <laughs> thought is free. I pray you, sir, bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Huh? Where, wherefore, mistress, what's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. Oh, why, I think so. <laughs> I am not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. But what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Uh, oh, are you full of them? Aye, sir, I have them at my fingers' ends. Marry, now I let go your hand. I am barren. <laughs> oh, night, thou lackst a cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? Mm, never in your life, I think. Unless you see canary put me down. <laughs> No, oh, methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. But I'm a great eater of beef, and I think that does harm to my wit. No question. When I thought that, I'd forswear it. But I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Poor Qua, my dear knight. What is poor Qua do or not do? Oh, would I have bestowed that time in the tongues that I have in fencing and dancing and bear-baiting? Oh, had I but followed the art. Oh, has I had a most excellent head of hair? Why, would that have mended my hair? Last question, that's easy. will not curl by nature. But it becomes me well enough, Oh, it excellent, well. Hangs like flax on a distaff. And I hope to see a huzziv take thee between her legs and spit it off. <laughs> May I ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby? Your niece will not be seen. And if she be, it's four to one, she'll none of me. But the Count himself hard by here woos her. She'll none of the Count, she'll not match above her degrees, either in years, estate, or wit. I've heard her swear. Tut the life into men. Huh. I'll stay a month longer. <laughs> Oh, I am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. <laughs> I delight in masks and revels sometimes all together. Are the good of these kickshaws, knight? Oh, oh, as good as any man in Illyria, whatsoever he be, under the degree of my betters, but I will not compare with an old man. What is thy excellence in a galliard, knight? Faith, I can cut a caper. Ah, I can cut the mutton, too. <laughs> and I think I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. But wherefore are these things hid? Wherefore are these gifts a curtain before them? And I like to take dust like Mistress Mal's picture. Why dost thou not go to church in a Coronto and come home in a galliard? My very walk should be a jig. I wouldn't so much as make water but in a sink of face. What dost thou mean? Is this a world to hide virtues in? I did think by the excellent constitution of thy leg. It was formed under the star of a galliard. Aye, tis strong. <laughs> <laughs> and it does indifferent well in a flame-coloured stock. <laughs> Shall we set about some rebels? What shall we do else? <laughs> Were we not born under Taurus? Taurus. Oh, uh, that, 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 that sides and hearts. No, sir, it's legs and thighs. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Let me see the cake. Cake. Come on. Uh, hey, oh. hey, 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 hey. Nay, either tell me where thou hast been, or I will not open my lips so wide as a bristle may enter in way of thy excuse. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. He that is well hanged in this world needs to fear no colours. Make that good. He shall see none to fear. Oh. <laughs> a good Lenten answer. I can tell thee where that saying was born of I fear no colours. Where, good Mistress Mary? In the walls. And that may you be bold to say in your foolery. God give them wisdom that have it, and those that are fools let them use their talents. Yet you will be hanged for being so long absent. Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. Oh, you... 
And if Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any in Olivia. Please, you rogue, no more of that. Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely, your best. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellows? Take away the lady. Go to. You're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna. The drink and good counsel will amend. The lady bade take away the fool. Therefore, I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade them take away you. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexteriously, good Madonna. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna, why mourn'st thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul's in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for a brother's soul being in heaven. <laughs> Take away the fool, gentlemen. <laughs> what think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity that decays the wise doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy <laughs> infirmity, for the better increasing your folly. How say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brain than a stone. Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he's gagged. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio. There is no slandering and a loud fool, though he do nothing but rail. Now, Mercury, endue thee with leasing, for thou speakst well of fools. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? Oh, I know not, madam. He's a fair young man and well attended. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, your kinsman. Fetch madam. him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madman. Fie on him. Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I'm sick or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. You have spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool, whose skull Jove crammed with brains. For here he comes. One of thy kin has a most weak piamata. By mine honour, half drunk. What is he at the gate, cousin? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a gentleman. A gentleman? What gentleman? A uh, gentleman here. Oh, 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 pig. Oh, this pickled herring. <laughs> How low, soft, <laughs> good Sir Toby. Cousin, cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Literally, I defy literally. That's um, one of the gates. I am Mary. What is he? <laughs> Let him be the devil, and he will. I cannot. You be faith, say I. <laughs> well, that's uh, all one. <laughs> What's a drunken man like fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draught above heat makes him a fool, the second mads him, and the third drowns him. Go thou, and seek the coroner, and let him sit, oh my cuz, for he's in the third degree of drink, he's drowned. Go, look after him. He's but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes on him to understand so much and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so. And he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of oh, mankind. Oh, what manner of man? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what personage and years is he? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. It is with him in standing water between boy and man. Let him approach. Call him my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman, my lady calls. Give me my veil. Come, throw it all my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. The honorable lady of the house, which is she? Speak to me, I shall answer for her. Your will. 
most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. <laughs> I pray you tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to come. <laughs> Good beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I'm very comfortable even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart. And yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear, I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. I will on with my speech in your praise, and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what's important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it. And tis poetic. It is more like to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swabber. I am to hull here a little longer. <laughs> Some modification for your giant, sweet lady. Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. What are you? What would you? What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ear's divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method, in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. It's not well done. Excellently done. If God did all. It is ingrained, sir, twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried, and every particle and utensil labelled to my will as item two lips in different red, item two grey eyes with lids to them, item one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see you what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompense, though you were crowned the nonpareil of beauty. How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial, I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love and sing them loud, even in the dead of night. Halloo your name to the reverberate hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia. Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him, let him send no more, unless perchance you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. 
Love make his heart a flint that you shall love. And let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. Oh, no. Even so quickly may one catch the plague. You think I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio? Here, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him, would I or not? Tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If that the youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hide thee, Malvolio. Oh, madam, I will. They show thy force. Ourselves we do not know. What is decreed must be. And be this so. <laughs> We're not you in love uh, with the Countess Olivia. Even now, sir. On a moderate pace, I've since arrived but hither. She returns this ring for you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, you should put your lord into a desperate assurance she will none of him. And one thing more, that you be never so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this, receive it so. If she took the ring of me, I'll none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her. And her will is it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. I left no ring with huh? her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside hath not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much that methought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts, distractedly. She loves me, sure. The cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring. Why, he sent her none. I am the man. If it be so, as tis, poor lady, she were better love a dream. Disguise, I see thou art a wickedness, wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper false in women's waxen hearts to set their forms? Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we. For such as we are made of, such we be. How will this patch? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him. And she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now alas the day. What thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? Thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to Midnight is to be good with early and dulicule surgery. Nay, by my troth, I know not. But I know that to be up late is to be up late. A false confusion that I hate as an unfilled can. To go to bed after midnight and to go to bed then is early. So that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed. Betimes. 
that not our life consists of the four elements? Faith, so they say, but I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Ah, the scholar. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, let us eat and drink. Merry, I say, a stoop of wine. Oh, here comes the fool, if they pound now my heart. Welcome, ass. Now, let's have a catch. Come on, let's... There's a sixpence for it. Now let's have a song. And here's a test drill of me, too. If one night give a test drill, would you have a love song or a song of good life? Oh, love song, a love song. Aye, aye. I care not for good life. Oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming. That can sing. Of other pretty sweeting journeys end in lovers meeting. Trip no further, pretty sweeting. Every wise man's son doth know. Oh, no. Doth know what is love, tis not hereafter. Present mirth, present laughter. What's to come? Mr. Lunchure, in delay there lies no plenty. Then come kiss me, sweet and twenty. In delay there lies no plenty. Youth's the stuff will not end you. I'm a lifeless voice as I'm a true knight. Shall we make the Wilkin dance indeed? Shall we rouse the night owl in a Catch little draw three souls out of one weaver. Shall we do that? Can yes. you love me? Let's do it. <laughs> no, I'm a dog at a catch. And, so, and some dogs will catch well. Oh, uh, most certain. Let our catch be, thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou yes. knave knight. I will be constrained in it to call thee knave knight. Ah, it is not the first time I have constrained one to call me knave. <laughs> but begin, fool. It begins, hold thy peace. I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> Good, you say. Come begin. Hold thy peace, thou hey, hold thy night, thou hey, hold thy peace, thou hey, thy night, thou hold thy peace, thou hey, thy night, thou hold thy peace, thou hold thy peace, thou What a cat of warning do you keep here? If my lady have not called up a steward, Malvolio, and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. My lady's a catire. We are politicians, Malvolios, a peg of rams. <laughs> and three women, and three women, and three women, and me. And I'm not consanguineous, oh. and not I of her blood, tilly belly. Lady, welcome and Babylon, lady, lady. <laughs> Shrew me, the knight's in admirable fooling. Aye, he does well enough if he be disposed, but so do I too. He does it with a better grace, but I do it more naturally. Oh, 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 but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? Do you make an ale house of my lady's house? That she squeak out your coziest catches without any mitigation or remorse of voice? Is there no respect of place, persons, nor time in you? We did keep time, sir, in our catches. Snick up. <laughs> Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that though she harbours you as her kinsman, she's nothing alive to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanours, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it would please you to take leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell to your heart, since I must needs be gone. Oh, good Sir Toby. His eyes do show his days are almost done. Is it even so? But I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. This is much credit to you. I bid him go and spare not. No! No, no, you dare not. Out of tune, sir, you lie. Are any more than a steward? 
Is that a thing because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more kicks and aims? Yes, by St Anne. And ginger shall be hot in the mouth, too. <laughs> oh, right. Go, sir, rub your chain with crumbs. That <laughs> in a stupor wine. <laughs> Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favour at anything more than contempt, you would not give rise for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. <laughs> Go, shake your ears. <laughs> Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the Count was today with my lady, she is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. Mm -hmm. If I do not gull him into a nay word and make him a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possessors, possessors, tell us something of him. Oh, marry, sir. Sometimes he is a kind of a Puritan. He, oh! And I thought that, and I beat him like a dog. What, for being a Puritan, thy exquisite reason, dear knight? I have no exquisite reason for it, but I have reason good enough. What will that do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love. <clears throat> Where in? By the colour of his beard, the shape of his legs, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. <laughs> I can write very like my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter, we can hardly make distinction of our hands. Excellent, I smell a device. I have it in my nose, too. He shall think by the letters that thou wilt drop that they come from my niece and the cheese. <laughs> In love with him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that colour. And your horse will now make him an ass. Ass, I doubt not. Oh, it will be admirable. Oh, sport royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with him. I will plant you two and let the fool make a third, where he shall find the letter. <sighs> Observe his construction of it. For this night to bed and dream on the event. Good night, Pennsylvania. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, before me, she's a good wench. She's a beagle, true bred, and one that adores me. What of that? I was adored once, too. Come, night. Let's to bed. I must needs send for more money, knight. If I cannot recover your niece, I am a foul way out. Send for more <laughs> money. <laughs> and I hast another the end. Call me cut. And I do not. Never trust me. Take it how you will. Come. I'll go burn some sack. Uh -oh. It's too late to go to bed now. <laughs> Come, knight. <laughs> Come, knight. <laughs> Give me some music. Oh. Tomorrow, friends. Now, good Cesario. But that piece of song, that old and antique song we had last night, I thought it did relieve my passion much. More than light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy paced times. Come, but one verse. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love, in the sweet pangs of it, remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is throned. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it, young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favour that it loves. Hath it not, boy? A little by your favour. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. She is not worth thee, then. What years, if faith? About your years, my lord. Too old by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder than herself. 
so wears she to him, so sways she level in her husband's heart. For boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. And let thy love be younger than thyself, or thy affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. And so they are. Alas, that they are so. To die, even when they to perfection grow. Oh, fellow, come. That song we had last night. Mark it, says I. It is old and plain. The spinsters and the knitters in the sun and the free maids that weave their thread with bones do use to chant it. Is silly sooth and dallies with the innocence of love like the old age. <coughs> Are you ready, sir? Aye. Prithee, sing. Come away, come away, dear, and in sad Cyprus let me be laid fly away fly away breath. I am slain by a fair cruel maid my shroud of white stuck all with you my part of death no one so true did share it not a flower not a flower sweet on my black coffin let there be strong not a friend not a friend Greet my poor corpse where my bones shall be thrown. A thousand, thousand sighs to save. Lay me on where sad true love never find my grave to weep. There. There's for thy pains. No pain, sir. I, I take pleasure in seeing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure, then. Truly, sir. And pleasure will be paid one time or another. Give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy god protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta. For thy mind is a very opal. Farewell. Let all the rest give place. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands. Those parts that fortune hath bestowed upon her, tell her I hold as giddily as fortune. But tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her in attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir... I cannot be so hard. Sooth, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much. They lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite. But mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter, loved a man. As it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. 
she never told her love. I'd let concealment, like a worm of the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will, for still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy. I am all the daughters of my father's house and all the brothers too. And yet, I know not. My name is Sebastian. My father was that Sebastian of Messaline, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. If the heavens had been pleased, would we had so ended? But you, sir, altered that. Oh, some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea was my sister drowned. Alas, Sir Dave. A lady, sir, though it was such she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She's drowned already, sir, with salt water. Oh, I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir. Your bad entertainment. My good Antonio, forgive me your trouble. Fare you well. Will you stay no longer? I'm bound for the Count Orsino's court. I have many enemies in Orsino's court. That's what you've shortly seen me there. Once, in a sea fight against the Countess galleys, I did some service. Of such note, indeed, that were I turn here, it would scarce be answered. Well, belike you slew great numbers of his people. <laughs> the offense is not of such a bloody nature. Albeit, the quality of the time and quarrel might well have given us bloody argument. It might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them, which, for traffic's sake, most of our city did. Only myself stood out. Which, if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. Well, do not then walk too open. It doth not fit me. Hold, sir. Here's my purse. In the south suburb that the elephant is best to lodge, I will bespeak our diet whilst you beguile the time and feed your knowledge with viewing of the town. There you shall have me. Why are your purse? Happily, your eye may light upon some toy or oh. some desire to purchase. And your store, I think, is not for idle market, sir. I'll be your purse bearer. I'll leave you for an hour. To the elephant. I do remember. Come my way, Signor Fabian. Nay, I'll come. You know he put me out of favor with my lady about a bear baiting here. There comes the little villain. Oh, now my metal of India. Get ye all three into the box tree. Oh, Malvolio is coming down this way. Close, in the name of Jester. Lie thou there. Oh, here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling. <laughs> Is but fortune. All is fortune. Maria once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near that should she fancy it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think of? Here's an overweening peace. Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. How he jets under his advanced plumes. Like I could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. To be Count Malvolio. That rogue. Pistol him, pistol him. Peace, peace, I say. There is example for you. The lady of the Stretchy, Mary, the yeoman of the wardrobe. Fire on him, Jezebel. Peace, now he is deeply in. Look how imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state, over a stone bowl to hit him in the eye, calling my officers about me in my branched velvet garden, having come from a day bed where I have left Olivia sleeping. Fire and prince! Yes. Yes. 
and then to have the humor of states, and after a demure travel of regard, telling them, I know my place as I would, they should do theirs, to ask for my kinsman, Toby. Boots and shackles. Peace, 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 now, now. Seven of my people with an obedient start make out for him. I frown the while, or perchance wind up my watch, or play with my, uh, some rich jewel. Toby approaches, courtesy is there to me. Shall this fellow live? Though our silence be drawn from us with cars, yet peace. I extend my hand to him thus, <laughs> quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. Does not Toby catch you up below the lips then? Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me on your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. What? Why? You must amend your drunkenness. Out scab me, patience, and we break the sinews of our plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knife. That's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew. Mm, and you twas I, for many do call me fool. What employment have we here? Now is the woodcock near the gym. Our peace and the spirit of humour's intimate reading aloud to him. No, my life, this is my lady's hand. To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes are very phrases. To whom should this be? This wins him liver and all. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know. No man must know. No man must know. Oh, if this should be thee, Malvolio. Oh, Mary, hang thee, Brock. I may command where I adore, but silence like a Lucrece knife, with bloodless stroke, my heart doth gore. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. A fusty and riddle. Excellent wench, say I. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Hey, but first, let me see, let me see, let me see. What dish of poison has she dressed him? I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me, I serve her, she is my lady. And the end, what should that alphabetical position portend? If I could make that resemble something in me. M-O-A-I. O-I. Make up that. Mm, Malvolio. M. Why, that begins my name. And did not I say he would work it out? M. An A should follow, but O does. And O shall end, I hope. I will cudgel him and make him cry. O. Then I comes behind. Aye, and you had any eye behind you, you'd see more detraction at your heels than fortunes before you. M-O-A-I, soft. Here follows prose. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. In my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever cross-gartered, I say, remember. Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still, the fellow of servants, and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, she that would alter services with thee, the fortunate unhappy. Oh, daylight and champagne discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point devise the very man. She did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my leg being cross-gartered. Oh, I thank my stars. I am happy. I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings and cross-gartered, even with the swiftness of putting on. Here is yet a postscript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling... <laughs> Thy smiles become thee well.
Oh, Jove, I thank thee. I will smile. I would not give my father in this sport for a pension of thousands. I would marry the wench for this device. So could I too. And ask no other dowry of her but such another jest. Nor I neither. <laughs> Table. No, sir, I live by the church. Art thou a churchman? No, such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live at my house, and my house does stand by the church. <laughs> Art not thou the Lady Olivia's fool? The Lady Olivia has no folly. She'll keep no fool <laughs> till she'd be married. <laughs> and fools are as like husbands, as pilchers are to herrings. The husband's the bigger. I'm indeed not her fool, but her <clears throat> corrupter of words. <laughs> I saw thee late at the Count Orsino's. Foolery, sir, doth walk about the orb like the sun. It, it shines everywhere. I would be sorry, sir, but the fool should be as off with your master as with my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, and thou pass upon me, I'll no more with thee. Hold, there's expenses for thee. Now, Jove, it is next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. By my troth, I tell thee I'm almost sick for one. Though I would not have it grow upon my chin. Is our lady within? My lady is within, sir. I will constitute her when she come. Who you are or what you would are out of my welkin. I might say element, but the word is overworn. This fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well craves a kind of wit. Most excellent accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on. Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam. And most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir. It was never merry world since lowly failing was called compliment. Your servant to the Count Orsino, you. And he is yours, and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts, would they were blanks rather than filled with me? Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. By your leave, I pray you. I bade you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I'd rather hear you to solicit that, the music from the spheres. Dear lady, give me leave, beseech you. I did send, after the last enchantment you did hear, a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me, you. Under your hard construction must I sit, to force that on you in a shameful cunning which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honor at the stake and baited it with all the unmuscled thoughts the tyrannous heart can think? To one of your receiving enough is shown. A cypress, not a bosom, hides my heart. So, let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, not degrees. Uh, for it is a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. <laughs> Why then? Methinks it is time to smile again. A world, how apt the poor are to be proud. If one should be a prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. <laughs> The clock upbraids me with the waste of time. Uh, be not afraid, good youth, I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth is come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way, due west. Then westward ho. Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You're nothing, madam, to my lord by me. Stay. 
I prithee, tell me what thou thinkst of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right. I am not what I am. I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so. The more go all thy pride, nor wits, nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo thou therefore hast no cause. But rather reason thus with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought is better. By innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth. And that no woman has, nor never none shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so adieu, good madam. Nevermore will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps mayst move this heart that now abhors to like his love. Nay, faith, I'll not stay a jot longer. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary, I saw your niece do more favours to the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. She did show favour to the youth only to exasperate you, to awake your dormouse valour, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You are now sailed into the north of my lady's opinion, where you will hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard, unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt, either of valour or policy. And be any way at all, it must be with valour. For policy, I hate. Well, then, build me thy fortunes on the basis of valour. Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Uh, will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go write it in a martial hand, be cursed and brief. Let there be gall enough in thy ink, though thou write with a goose pen, no matter about it. But, uh, where, where shall I find you? We'll call thee at the cubiculo. Go. <laughs> This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I've been dear to him, lad, some 2,000 strong or so. <laughs> we shall have a rare letter from him, uh, but you'll not deliver. Never trust me, then. By all means, draw on the youth to an answer. I think oxen and wain ropes cannot hail them together for Andrew. If he were opened and you find so much blood in his liver as will clog the foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. <laughs> Look where the youngest friend of nine comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you desire the spleen and would laugh yourselves into stitches, follow me. Hmm? Young Gull Malvolio is turned heathen, a very renegado. He's in yellow stockings. <laughs> and, and, and cross guard. And... Almost villainously, he can smile his face into more lines than is in the new map with the augmentation of the Indies. I know my lady will strike him, and if she do, He'll smile and take it as a great favor. How now, Malvolio? Sweet lady, ho, ho. Smile, star. I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad? It could be sad, lady. It does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross gartering, but what of that? Why, how dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, though yellow in my legs. It did come to his hand, and command shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed? Aye, sweetheart, and I'll come to thee. Oh, comfort thee! Why dost thou smile so, and kiss thy hand so? Oh, how do you, Malvolio? At your request? Yes, Nightingale's answer door. Oh, why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness, twas well writ. What meanst thou by that, my brother? Some are born great, uh -huh. some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings. Thy yellow stockings. And wished to see thee ever cross gartered. Cross gartered? No, to that maid, if thou desirest to be so. maid? If not, let me see thee a servant still. Oh, why, this is very midsummer madness. Oh, Maria, I fear he is possessed, madam. Let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not see him miscarry for the half of my dowry. Oh, do you come near me now? 
No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sends him on purpose that I may appear stubborn to him. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow. Not Malvolio. Not after my degree, but fellow. What can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Well, Jove, not I, is the doer of this, and he is to be thanked. Where is he in the name of sanctity? Here he is, here he is. How is with you, sir? How is with you, man? Go on. I discard you. Let me enjoy my private. Go off! Lo, how horror the fiend speaks within him. Pray God he be not bewitched. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. How now, my boy, cock what chit 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 I bid thee come with me, what man? It's not for gravity to play a cherry pit with Satan. Hang him, foul collier. Get him to say his prayers. Good Sir Toby, get him to pray. My prayers, Minx. No, I warrant you, he will not hear of God. Go, hang yourselves all. Your idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> <laughs> Why, we shall make him mad indeed. Oh, house with a quiet... Come. We'll have him in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in the belief he's mad. We may carry it thus far for our pleasure and his penance till our very pastime, tired out with breath, prompt us to have mercy on him. But see, but see. More matter for a May morning. Here's the challenge. Do but read it. I warrant this vinegar and pepper in. It's so saucy. And I is, I warrant him. Do but read. Give me. <laughs> Eus, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. I will waylay thee going home, where, if it be thy chance to kill me, Good. thou killst me like a rogue and a villain. Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon thine, but my hope is better. And so look to thyself, thy friend as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Eguchi. Well, if this letter move him not, his legs cannot, I'll gift him. You may have very fit occasion for it, for he's even now in some commerce with my lady, and will by and by depart. Go, Sir Andrew, scout me for him at the corner of the orchard like a bum daily. As soon as ever thou seest him, draw, and as thou drawest, swear horrible. Go! <laughs> Let me alone for swearing. <laughs> I have said too much unto a heart of stone, and laid mine honour to unchary out. There's something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong, potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. If the same behavior that your passion bears goes on my master's grief. Here, wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture, refuse it not. It hath no tongue to vex you, and I beseech you come again tomorrow. What will you ask of me that I'll deny, that honor saved may upon asking give? Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How with mine honor may I give him that which I have given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Children, God save you. And you, sir. That defense thou hast, bid take thee toot. Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard's end. You mistake, sir. I'm sure no man hath any quarrel to me. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, but take you to your guard, to your opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish man with all. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is a knight dubbed with unhacked rapier and on carpet consideration. But he's a devil in a private brawl. I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. <laughs> I am no fighter. I beseech you, do me this courteous office as to know of the knight what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Signor Fabian, stand you by this gentleman till my return. 
I pray you, sir, do, do you know of this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal abitrement, but nothing of the circumstance more. I, I pray, I beseech you, sir, what manner of man is he? He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite that you could possibly have found in any part of Illyria. Uh, will you walk towards him? Uh, I will make your peace with him, if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I am one that would rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. And I care not who knows so much of my metal. Why, man, he's a very devil. I've not seen such a virago. They say he's been fencer to the sofa. Pox on, I'll not meddle with him. But he'll not now be so pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. <laughs> let him let the matter slip, and I'll give him my horse. <laughs> Grey Capulet. I'll make the motion. Stand here. Make a good show on it. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. I've got his horse to take up the quarrel. I persuaded him the youth's a devil. He is as horribly conceited of him and pants and looks pale as if a bear were at his heels. No remedy, sir. The gentleman will fight with you for his own sake. Oh, pray God, defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Give ground if you see him furious. Come, sir, and there's no remedy. The gentleman will have one bout with you. Come on, two turn. <laughs> I do assure you, sir, it is against my will. Oh, sir, it is... If this young gentleman hath done offence, I take the fault on me. Did you offend him, I for him defy you. Why, sir, what are you, sir? One, sir, who for his love dares yet do more than you've heard him brag to you, hear you? Hey, if you're an undertaker, I am for you. Oh, good, sir, copy, hold. Here come the officers. I'll be with you. I'm not. Oh, sir, put your sword up, if you will. Oh, Mary, will I, sir? And um, uh, for that horse that I promised you, I'll be as good as my word. He will bear you easily and reigns well. This is the man, do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. You do mistake me, sir. No, sir, no jot. I know your favor well, though now you have no sea cap on your head. Take him away. He knows I know him well. I must have paid. This comes with seeking you. But there's no remedy, I shall answer it. What will you do now my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse? <laughs> you stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away. I must entreat you of some of that money. What money, sir? For the fair kindness you have shown me here, and part being prompted by your present trouble, out of my lean and low ability, I'll lend you something. And you deny me now? It's possible that my desires to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest that it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none, nor know I you by voice or any feature. Oh, heavens themselves! Come, sir, I pray you go. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death relieved him with such sanctity of love, and to his image, which methought did promise most venerable worth, did I devote. What's that to us? The time goes by, away. Yet how vile an idol proves this god. Thou hast, Sebastian, done good feature shame. The man goes mad, away with him. Come, come, sir. Lead me on. <laughs> My brother no yet living in my glass even such and so in favor was my brother and he went still in this fashion color ornament for him i imitate prove true imagination oh prove true that i dear brother be now tame for you a very dishonest paltry boy and more coward than a hare his dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him as for his cowardship Ask Fabian. A coward, a most devout coward, religious in slid. I after him again and beat him. Do so cuff him soundly, but never draw thy sword. And I do not. <laughs> Come, let's see the event. Have you any money? It'll be nothing yet. <laughs> 
Will you make me believe that I'm not sent for you? Go to, go to, thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of this. No, I do not know you, nor am I not sent you by my lady to bid you come speak with her, nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose neither. Nothing that is so is so. I prithee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowst not me. Vent thy folly? He's heard the word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent thy folly. I prithee now, ungird thy strangeness and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I pray thee, foolish Greek, depart from me. Hold. There's money for thee. And if you tarry longer, I shall give worse payment. By my trunk, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money get themselves a good report after 14 years' purchase. So, sir, had I met you again, <laughs> there's for you. Why, there's for thee, and there ain't there. Are all the people mad? Come, sir, all oh, oh, three are dead all the house. This I would tell my lady straight. I wouldn't be in some of your coats for two pence. Come, sir. Oh. Nay, nay, let him alone. <laughs> I'll uh, go another way to work with him. I, I'll have an action of battery against him if there be any law in Illyria. <laughs> Though I struck him first, yet it's no matter for that. Let go thy hand. Come, sir, I'll let you go. Come on, sir, to put up your iron. Ah, you will flesh. Come on, hold. I will be free from thee. What would thou now? If thou dost ten feet further, draw thy sword. I was? Nay, nee, I must come and answer two of this malapert blood from you. Must I? Ay, ay, ay. Madam. Will it be ever thus, ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves where manners ne'er were taught? Out of my sight. Be not offended, dear Cesario. Roods be begone. I prithee, gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, not thy passion, sway in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house. Do not deny. Beshrew his soul for me. He started one poor heart of mine in thee. What relish is in this? How runs the stream? Or I am mad, or else this is a dream. Let fancy still my sense in Lethe steep. If it be thus to dream, still let me sleep. Nay, come, my privy. Would thou be ruled by me? Say so, and so be. <laughs> Nay, I prithee, put on this cloak. And this beard. <laughs> Make him believe thou art Sir Topaz, the curate. Do it quickly. Joe, bless thee, Master Parson, to him, Sir Topaz. <laughs> what ho, I say! Peace in this prison. The counterfeits well a good maid. Who calls there? Sir Topaz, the curate. Who comes to visit Malvolio, the lunatic? Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz, good Sir Topaz, go to my lady. Out, hyperbolical fiend! How vexest thou this man? Talks thou nothing but of ladies? Well said, Master Parson. Oh, good Sir Topaz, do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. Fie, thou dishonest Satan! I call thee by the most modest terms, for I am one of those gentle ones that would use the devil himself with courtesy. Yet seest thou that house is dark? As hell, Sir Topaz. Why, it hath bay windows, transparent as barricados, and the clear stories towards the south, north are as lustrous as ebony. Yet complainest thou of obstruction. I am not mad, Sir Topaz. I say to you, this house is dark. Madman, thou errest. I say there is no darkness but ignorance. I am no more mad than you are. Make the trial of it in any constant question. What is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wild fowl? That the soul of our grand Am might happily inhabit a bird. What thinkest thou of his opinion? I think nobly of the soul, and nowhere prove his opinion. Fare thee well. Remain thou still in darkness. 
Thou shalt hold the opinion of Pythagoras, ere I will allow of thy wits. Fare thee well. Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz. My most exquisite Sir Topaz. To him, in thy own voice, bring me news how thou findst him. I would we were well rid of this knavery. Come, by and by, to my chamber. <laughs> hey, Robin, jolly Robin. Tell me how my lady does. Fool. My lady is unkind, Purdy. Fool. Alas, why is she so? Fool, I say. She loves another. Who calls her? Huh? Oh, good fool. Help me to a candle and pen, ink, and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvoli. Hi, good fool. Oh, alas, sir, how fell you beside your five wits? I'm as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well? <laughs> well, you're mad indeed if you know better in your wits than a fool. <laughs> you have here profited me. Keep me in darkness and ministers to me, asses. And do all they can to face me out of my wits. Advise you what you say. The minister's here. Malvolio! Malvolio! Thy wits the heavenly star. Endeavor thyself to sleep and leave thy vain bevels. Sir Topaz. Maintain no words with him, good fellow. Who, I, sir? Oh, not I, sir. God be with you, good Sir Topaz. Many are men. Oh, I will, sir. I will. Fool, 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 I say. Alas, be patient. And what say you, sir? I'm shem for speaking to you. Good fool, help me to some light and some paper. I tell thee I'm as well in my wits as any man in Illyria. Ah, oh, well a day that you were, sir. By this hand I am. Good fool, some ink, paper and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. Well, I'll help you to it, but, but tell me true. Are, are you not mad indeed, or, or do you <clears throat> counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. I ne'er believe a madman till I see his brains. <laughs> well, I'll help you to some light and come paper. Pretty be gone. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir. Adieu, good man, devil. This is the air. That is the glorious sun. Of this pearl she gave me. I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio, then? I could not find him at the elephant, yet there he was, and there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. But here the lady comes. Blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, now go with me, and with this holy man into the chantry by. There before him, and underneath that consecrated roof, plight me the full assurance of your faith, that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. What do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you. Uh, and having sworn truth, ever will be true. Then lead the way, good father. And heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. Hi, sir. We are some of her trappings. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the worse for my friends and the better for my foes. <laughs> Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Marry, sir, my friends praise me and make an ass of me. And now my foes tell me plainly, I am an ass. <laughs> so to buy my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends, I'm abused. <laughs> Why, then, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends? Thou shalt not be the worse for me. There's gold. Oh. You will let your lady know I'm here to speak with her and bring her along with you. It may await my bounty further. Manny, sir, lullaby to your bounty till I come again. 
<laughs> I go, sir, but I would not have you to think that my desire of having was the sin of covetousness. <laughs> but as you say, sir, let your bounty take a nap. I will wake it and not. <laughs> <laughs> the man, sir, that did rescue me. What is the matter? Orsino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her fraud from Candy. Here in the street, desperate of state and shame, in private brabble did we apprehend him. He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what was but distraction. Notable pirate, a saltwater thief. What foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies, whom thou in turn so bloody and so dear hast made thine enemies. Orsino! Noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio, never yet was sea for pirate. Well, I confess on base and ground enough Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side. From the rude seas enraged and foamy mouth did I redeem. A wreck past hope he was. His life I gave him. And did dare to add my love without retention or restraint all his in dedication. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord. And for three months before, no interim, not a minute's vacancy, both day and night did we keep company. Here comes the Countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me, but more of that anon. Take him aside. What would my lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Cesare! You do not keep promise with me. Madam. Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Good my lord. My lord would speak. My duty hushes me. If it be aught the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so cruel? Still so constant, lord. But to perverseness? You uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul, the faithfulest offerings, hath breathed out that air devotion tendered. What shall I do? Even what it please, my lord, that shall become him. Since you to non regardance cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, live you the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this your minion, whom I know you'll love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly, him will I pluck out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I most jock and apt and willingly to do you rest a thousand deaths would die. Where go, Cesario? After him I love. More than I love these eyes, more than my life. More by all mores than e'er I shall love wife. If I do feign you witnesses above, punish my life. Or tainting of my love. Come away. Whither, my lord Cesario, husband? Stay. Husband? Aye, husband. Can he that deny? Her husband, sir. No, my lord, not I. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold what thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love, uh, confirmed by interchangement of your rings. And since when, my watch hath told me, toward my grave I have travelled but two hours. Oh, thou dissembling cub. What wilt thou be when time hath sowed a grizzle on thy case? Farewell. And take her, but direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. Oh, do not swear. Hold little faith, though thou hast too much fear. For the love of God, a surgeon, you must send one presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? Just broke my head across and given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb too. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman, one Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil in courage. My gentleman, Cesario? Yeah, oh, odd stacklings, there he is. You broke my head for nothing, and that that I did, I was set on to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you've hurt me. I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb. <gasps> Here comes Sir Toby, halting. You shall hear more. But if he had not been in drink, he would have tickled you other gates than he did. How uh, now, gentlemen? How is it with you? Uh, it's all right. It's hurt me as, as it is long. <laughs> Did see Dick, surgeon, sort. Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby, an hour gone. His eyes were set at eight in the morning. There's a rogue and a pennicious pebbin. I... 
hate a drunken rogue. Away with him. Who hath made this havoc with them? Now, I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. We were help an ass oh, and an apostrophe, oh, a knave, oh, a thin-faced oh, knave, oh, a girl, oh, a girl. Get him to bed and let his hurts be looked to. I'm sorry, madam, I have hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I could have done no less with wit and safety. Most wonderful. Do I stand there? I never had a brother. Nor can there be that deity in my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman, what name, what parentage? Of Messaline. Sebastian was my father. Such as Sebastian was my brother, too. So went he suited to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. Were you a woman? As the rest goes even, I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say thrice welcome, drowned vile. If nothing lets to make us happy both, but this my masculine usurp to tire, do not embrace me till each circumstance of place, time, fortune to cohere and jump that I am vile. Which to confirm, I'll bring you to a captain in this town where lie my maiden weeds, by whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble cow. So comes it, lady, you have been mistook. But nature to her bias drew in that you would have been contracted to a maid. <laughs> Nor are you therein by my life deceived. You are betrothed both to a maid and man. <laughs> be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy wreck. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman like to me. And all those sayings will I overswear, and all those swearings keep us true in soul, as doth that orbit continent the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. The captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. He upon some action is now endurance at Malvolio, suit a gentleman and follower of my lady. He shall release him. Fetch Malvolio hither. And now, alas, now I remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he is much distract. A most extracting frenzy of mine own from my remembrance clearly banished his. How does he, Sarah? As well as a man in his case might do, madam. He has here <laughs> written a letter to you. Open it and read it. Look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. <laughs> Oh, no, madam, I do, but read madness, and as your ladyship will have it as it ought to be, you must allow Vox. I prithee read it of thy right wits. Well, so I do, madam, but to read his right wits is to read thus. Therefore, uh, perpend, my princess, and give ear. By the Lord, read madam! it, you, sirrah. By the Lord, madam, you wronged me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury. The madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? Aye, madam. This savours not much of distraction. See him delivered. Fabian, bring him hither. My lord, so please you, these things further thought on. To think me as well as sister. As a wife. Your master quits you. And for your service done him so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding. And since you called me master for so long, here is my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. A sister. You are she. Is this the madman? How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. Lady, you have. Pray you peruse that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. And tell me in the modesty of honour why you have given me such clear lights of favour. Bad me come smiling and cross-gartered to you to put on yellow stockings. 
and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people. And acting this in an obedient hope, why have you suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by the priest and made the most notorious geck and gull that their invention played on? Tell me why. Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing, though I confess much like the character, but out of question, tis Maria's hand. <laughs> Good madam, let me speak. Most freely I confess, myself and Toby set this device against Malvolio here upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. Maria writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance, in recompense whereof he hath married her. <laughs> Alas, poor fool, how have they baffled thee? Why? Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude, one Sir Topass, sir, that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I'm not mad. But do you remember, madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal? And you smile not, he's gagged. And thus the whirligig of time brings in his revenges. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. He hath been most notoriously abused. Pursue him and entreat him to a peace. He hath not told us of the captain yet. When that is known and golden time convince, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence. Cesario, come, for so you shall be while you are a man. But when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen, Thank you. 